of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My dear friends, today on this 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time, I offer prayers for you and pray for the intentions you bring to God today. Pray for those who are riding the strongest storm of their lives at this time are weary, disturbed, unsure, uncertain, that they may feel the closeness and the presence of God riding those storms with them to safety. Pray for those who travel around this time. Pray and ask for God's safety. Pray for those who care for our sick. Pray for God's protection. And for those who have died, Today I pray for my dad who passed away several years ago. Pray especially for the lessons that he left us, especially in my own life, that have led me to this moment and part of what I would like to reflect on today. Pray and ask that God may grant him the perfect rest I, I think he deserves. Pray for our families. Pray especially any family at this time that has cause to be sad, be sorrowful, and be in despair that our blessed mother may shield and cover them with the mantle of her care and protection i'll pray for those who have birthdays or anniversaries today as well pray and ask many more of god's blessings in your life i remember to pray for a dear friend of mine freddie who passed away several years ago i remember today is his birthday i pray that god may bless him and that god may grant him rest to prepare ourselves, dear friends, for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, the God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, 
home, taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father. Bring me pray to perfection in our hearts, the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the book of 1 Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said to him, Go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalmist, Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. I will hear what God proclaims, the Lord, for he proclaims peace. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him, glory dwelling in our land. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Kindness and truth shall meet. Justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and prepare the way of his steps. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Our second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I speak the truth in Christ. I do not lie. My conscience joins with the Holy Spirit in bearing me witness that I have great sorrow and constant anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites. Yes, the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. Theirs, the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is over all, God, blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 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 I wait for the Lord. My soul waits for his word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. 
after he had fed the people, Jesus made his disciples get into a boat and proceed him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came towards them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they cried. They said and cried out in fear. At once, Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it's you, command me to come on the water. He said, Come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water towards Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught Peter and said to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. And the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, I pray every day for you, and I hope that Today, as we celebrate this great sacrament together, that something wonderful, something exciting, something hopeful, something beautiful will happen in your own life. That's my hope. That you will see God manifest himself in your life in more ways than you have ever imagined. That's my hope for you. But today I will reflect with you from the first reading and the gospel reading. And I'm going to make one point from each of those readings. And so I'd like to begin with the first. You know, um, there are so many people who wait for happiness in the extraordinary things that happen to them. For instance, they wait for happiness in when they land the job of their dreams or when they get their accomplish and get their degree get that certificate in their hand during their graduation or when they celebrate their 25 years of marriage or ordination or when they do something in the lottery so generally they're waiting for big things to be happy what, what I see from this reading is that true happiness True contentment comes from you recognizing the small things, the small events that happen in your life. And I learned that from my dad. Now, big things, great things don't happen often in your life. I, I don't know anyone in this world who has major things, major events happen in their lives every time. They don't happen often. Yeah, they may come once in a while. So if you are waiting to have great things happen in your life to be happy, 
my sister, my brother, you're going to be waiting for a long time. And there's a chance you may never get the opportunity to be happy in your life. And so I learned very, very early on in my life to be grateful for little things that happened to you. My parents were not wealthy. They were both teachers. And so they didn't have the opportunity to give us great things. But they taught us to be appreciative and to be grateful for little things that we got. And so I learned in my life that when you recognize the little things that happen to you, even just like someone opening the door for you, all right, and you recognize the kindness of someone you know, um, expressed towards you, if you could recognize that and be happy for that, and be happy for someone saying good morning to you, and be happy for someone telling you, man, well, you dressed so well, or I like the way you talk, or I, I like the way you drive, or I like whatever, Little things like that, I promise you, by the end of 24 hours, or let me say 16 hours of your day, because nobody works for 24 hours, say 16 hours of your day when you were awake, if you get an aggregate of all of those little events that happen in your life across your day, you will realize they amount to something super awesome, super great in your life. But the mistake that we have not learned, just like Elijah in this, in this Bible, this Bible, in this Bible text. See, Elijah, based on the way he had been trained, I guess, was looking for God in the extraordinary events of his life. He was looking for God in the super consuming moments, like when he saw or he felt a heavy, strong hurricane or wind coming towards him, he thought that would be God because based on everything he knew of God, God is this super awesome, super super powerful creature such that when he is coming, he comes in, in, in awe. But God also comes in those little moments, those little things that happen every day. And he watches to see how we respond to those little moments and to see how in those little moments, we qualify ourselves for the better and for the greater moments. And scripture bears that bears testimony to that. It says, unless you have learned to do and to handle small things well, there's no chance you're going to get the big things. And so because if you don't handle the small things well, there is no chance you will handle the big things properly. You will not. Not because you don't want to but because you have not trained yourself too. So these things don't happen by accident. These are spiritual principles. God is laid out that if we learn to follow, happiness is so very close. Happiness is part of who we are and what we are and what happens around us. We can be happy and we can be content with life. And so Elijah watched for God in the strong winds and scripture says, no, God was not there. Then he watched for God in the earthquake that was that was crushing mountains and hills and stones and rocks. And he wasn't there. And then he was waiting for a consuming fire, consuming everything in its wake. And he wasn't there. Then suddenly there was this gentle, this calm breeze. And there was God. In that, in that calmness, in that free, easy, smooth flowing breeze, God showed himself, not in the crashing, crashing earthquakes or the fires or the winds or the storms, but in the very little events of life. So I pray that you and I may learn to recognize the activity and to recognize the effect of God's grace in the little things that happen to us. And all of them meant to line up everything, as scripture says, line up everything for the good of those who believe and trust. If you can begin to identify in a day the little things that happen, like a text message someone sends to you, just saying to you, I was just checking on you to see how you're doing. 
you can learn to allow those moments feed you with joy that you are loved that most of us are just so obsessed waiting for big breakthroughs waiting for great things to happen i tell you you may never get the mindset and the mental the mental comportment to press for great things when you are constantly ignoring all the other little things that happen to you it's it's it doesn't work that way so i pray that we will seek first those little things that god is doing every day in our lives and suddenly we would have prepared ourselves for great things. Even in our natural lives, when your kid is, is poor, you don't allow them to drive your car. Yeah, you drive with them, you drive them. You do until they're mature to a point where you can trust to give them your car. So if, if we as parents don't do things like that, how do we expect God to do the same thing? So God also wants us to see if we are mature in handling all of these things, then he allows us the bigger things to handle. He trusts us that we can handle them well. And that's what I see from this first reading. And thank God, my dad taught us growing up very early on. And so I learned in my life to recognize little things that people do, little things that happen around me. And I find joy in all of those things. Yes. Slowly, gradually, you will learn the big things and the great things in your life. And in the gospel reading, we see something else that I also learned growing up in my life. Everyone you see today, that includes you and me, every one of us, is riding a storm of some kind. Believe it or not, everyone. That includes the president. It includes the governors, it includes the Pope, it includes every human being on the face of the earth is riding a storm of some kind. You may see some people calm, looking composed, looking peaceful, looking tranquil. You're thinking, well, their lives must be so sweet. Or you might see them taking pictures, posting on social media, smiling, make, as though they don't have anything to worry about. Yeah, they may be looking psychedelic or looking... Yes, but every one has a storm. The difference is that some people have learned to manage their storms differently. That, that's the difference. There is no one on the face of the earth today who is not riding a storm of some kind. We see what was happening here in the Gospel. Jesus had just fed the 5,000. Disciples, I guess, were exhausted and tired. And then they get into a boat to cross to the other side to catch some rest. And Jesus goes to, to pray, maybe to give thanks to God for the miracle of the loads and just for everything that he does because he learns to recognize little things and he offers thanks for all of them. So he goes to spend a few moments with his father. The disciples come straight on with the storm. Of their own lives. You, you can imagine. Now in the midst of this storm. They were doing everything else. But. What they had learned from the Lord. Use what they had. Use their faith. They did not do that. So you realize. They are desperate. And that's what happens when we are riding storms. Because generally, believe it or not, when we see the storm, the storms, normally some of the storms that come into our life don't come prepared. Because they don't prepare us that they were coming. So they take us by surprise. And so there's that element of surprise, that element of shock and unpreparedness that knocks us out of our game and makes us scared, fearful, terrified. So the element of surprise is always there in some of the things, just like this virus. Sometimes until you catch it, you never realize, wow, this was real, or this was this bad. So there's always element of surprise, and that's what happened. When the disciples got into the boat, they did not expect this storm. They were just hoping, thank God, at least these guys, we fed them now, they are full, they are gone, we can go get some rest, and suddenly there was something else to deal with. 
And that's how life is, unfortunately. It happens to me, it happens to you, it happens to everyone. But you must learn to recognize that sure, not every storm that comes into your life is meant to knock you down and knock you out and just kill you or destroy you. I believe in my life and I believe in your life too that most of the storms that God allows our way are meant to clear the path for us. Are meant to clear the way for us. Just so we can come to the realization of what God is doing all the while. But because we allow ourselves to become so fearful, so desperate, so terrified. We, we don't see what God is doing. We blame, we complain, we, we cry, we, we do all kinds of things. There's something my dad also taught us. When he was teaching us on, um, because my dad would always do something every Sunday. After we go for service and come back in the evening, my dad will sit us down and then find one book that he wants to read for us and explain to us lessons of life. So there was this book, God Walks With You and Not For You by Law Russell, that my dad would always use to teach us. And, and from that book, he would let us know that in every storm you write, there is a job that God would do. But there's a job that you must also do in that storm. The mistake most of us do is we do nothing. We just wait for God to come and rescue us and to come and deliver us. We don't want to do nothing. Says that's not what God does. God will not come and ride the storm for you. You will do your part and then God will protect and preserve you through that storm because he needs you to get used to riding storms. Says, you see when you are training your kid to ride a bike, a bicycle, you don't, you are not the one who will be riding the bicycle the entire time. Yes, there are times you hold your kid and then you let them stabilize and then you let them go. Now the kid is doing his or her job while you are doing the job of stabilizing the kid just so the kid can ride, this, ride a bike. And the kid might fall once or twice, but she learns doing it. So my dad will always look, God is not going to come and ride a bike for you. Yes, you must make sure you have the courage and the confidence to ride the bike. But God is going to stabilize the bike for you just so you can ride on. The mistake in life is that too many of us are waiting for God to be the one riding the bike. Then what would we be doing? God is not going to do the heavy lifts for you because your training depends on doing what God is given you the ability to do. So the apostles were not doing it. And of course you heard the scolding from Jesus. And I'm sure if Jesus were here as we're riding our own storms and, and, and maybe um, faltering at every step because we are all, all the while looking to God for help and not doing our part. When you do your part, God is faithful enough. He will do his part. In every, in every storm. And it doesn't matter what storm you are dealing with right now. If you do your part, if you focus on, God, show me what my role is in this, in this storm. And just do your role. You will recognize that sooner than later, he is not distant, he is not far. Just as the fact that your kid is falling over and over, you don't stop. Or you just don't come and then take the bike and begin to ride on your own. And your kid will suddenly learn how to ride. No, you don't do that. You keep making sure you you there, you present, you close by, and you're watching them and making sure they learn right and do it right. And so I, I don't know what storm you are riding. I'll give you the lesson I learned from my dad. When you are riding that storm, just identify what your job is in that storm and do it. Says and when you do it, don't be impatient. Because some of us, once we do our role, we are impatient. We want God to answer immediately. It says, when you do your part, because you are so prone to error and mistakes, it says, you may have made a lot, a lot of mistakes on the road in trying to do your part. Now, because God would need to correct all of those errors. Why? Because he saw the efforts you made. So he's going to bless you for those efforts. But he needs to correct all of those errors and all of those mistakes you made in the process of doing your part before 
he can cap your efforts with success before he can cap your efforts with results but most of us get so desperate that we go back and then snatch whatever we had done because we couldn't wait for God to correct everything and then cap our efforts with success and with grace so today dear friends we learn that when we write our storms do your part God knows exactly what he's going to do in that the apostles failed in this case that's why the schooling came immediately oh you of little faith why did you die why were you afraid why were you afraid God has power to calm every storm but he will not in most cases if we don't do our part I pray dear friends that we may learn these two lessons the first to identify God walking in and through little things that happen to us and second that when we are riding our storms the storms of our lives that we do our part and then wait with patience let God correct all the errors and all the mistakes we made and then God will cap our efforts with success and victory so as I like to end my reflections by reminding you that you remain the delight of the Almighty God that God loves you very much let us say the creed I believe in one God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth of all things visible and invisible I believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ the only begotten Son of God born of the Father before all ages God from God life from life true God from true God begotten not made consubstantial with the Father through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man for our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets I believe in the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come Amen. let us pray Heavenly God Today we pray for our Holy Father the Pope, we pray for our bishops, we pray for our priests, we pray for our deacons, pray for all religious leaders of other Christian denominations and world religions, that your grace and your spirit may continue to lead our efforts to speak truth, to heal the divisiveness in our, in our societies and to demonstrate respect and dignity for all of your children. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for government leaders and all public servants that we may take seriously our responsibility and our role in making government work for all of God's children. Let us pray. To the Lord Lord hear our prayer we pray for our military pray for our police pray for our fire department pray for our emergency responders pray for all those who dedicate their lives for the service of others that God may protect and that God may bless them pray especially for those whose lives are in greater risk today May God keep them safe. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for people in the hospitality industry. Pray for those on the front lines of this battle, those in our grocery stores. Pray for our healthcare workers. Pray for people whose employment or whose job description puts them constantly in danger or at risk with this virus that God may protect them every day and that we may learn to appreciate their service to our society let us pray to the Lord Lord hear our prayer we pray for people who travel 
Pray especially for those who would wish they could travel and cannot because of this virus. That God may help them find more or better or different ways to achieve their life's goals. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are riding very, very difficult storms in their lives right now. Feeling overwhelmed, depressed, fearful, scared, feeling they're losing everything. That they may feel like Elijah, the calming presence of God, assuring them that everything will be okay. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have birthdays or anniversaries. Pray especially for Freddie who passed away several years ago. That God may grant him a joyful birthday on the other side. Pray for all others who have died during this period, people we know. That God may reward them with rest. We pray for anyone who is grieving their loss at this time. May they find comfort and grace. Let us ask our Blessed Mother to pray for us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and there of our death. Amen. Blessed thy Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made to become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed thy Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruits of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of a virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us eternal life. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the unending hymn of your glory, as without ends we are clean. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, and they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, giving thanks he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection 
until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you both the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring all to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters. Remember your servant, Charles Starr and Frederick, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant all peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always and with your spirit. My dear friends, from me to all of you, may God's peace rest and abide now and always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, Grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers, and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. We now say prayers for grace. We participate in spiritual communion for those who are unable to receive the Eucharist. Most compassionate and ever loving God, for all of your sons and daughters who are still unable to participate physically and receive this sacrament, we ask for grace of spiritual communion. That wherever they are and are joining us at this time, that they may receive the full effect of this sacrament that they may feel the calming effect of your presence through their storms. They may know and recognize you in the little events of their lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed, O Lord, 
Save us and confirm us in the light of your truth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and sins of the devil. May God rebuke him with humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the wings of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to you for joining us at this Mass. I pray God to bless you, to keep you safe, and that God may reveal himself especially as you, as you write your storms, the storms in your own life. As always, I'd like to end everything I do and say by reminding you that you remain the delight of the mind God. God loves you very much. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Through the prayers of our blessed mother, may God bless and keep you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing how great thou art. O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the wars thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the roaring thunder, thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art.